Good evening and welcome to another episode of Teta Tet at Suvi's Power Meet. Today we have indeed an extremely interesting guest <laughs> and uh, it's going to be my honor to introduce you to him. Uh, and I must say that uh, this guest is very, very special to us because he's a very, very, very dear friend too. <laughs> but uh, before that, I'd like to welcome all you people who have joined us today a very very warm welcome to one and all and uh, uh, i hope all of you all are safe and all of you all are fine so without much ado let's welcome our guest for today antoine lewis <laughs> welcome <Hello>. antoine <laughs> so good to have you on my talk show ted at ted at suvi's power meet and Thank you for having uh, me so any time, any time. I mean, I'm really glad that and great that you you've come here because I know today the 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 sharing that you're going to do is going to be amazing. Uh, so without much ado, uh, let's see what Antoine has in store of, uh, for us. But before that, I'd like to introduce him uh, formally to all our viewers. Uh, Antoine Lewis is a man who dons many a hats. He's been a journalist, a radio commentator a food consultant, a media consultant, and a director at Mumbai's biggest literary festival. As a food writer, he is written for almost every English newspaper and magazine in the last two decades. And he has been the editor of magazines like Savvy Cookbook and the Khalid Times Cookbook. Every Thursday morning, he talks about restaurants, fruit trends, and books on 94.3 with Rishi K. One, uh, it, the, the show is called uh, Good Morning Mumbai. He has written uh, essays on the history of food. He's given a TEDx uh, uh, talk on the myths of uh, authenticity and conducted a lecture on the series on the history of our restaurants in Mumbai. Currently, he's keeping himself busy in the kitchen by inventing new dishes. Antoine, we would really like to know more about that. <laughs> so, without, so without much ado, tell us, Antoine, I mean, so many hats you don, but what is it that Antoine likes the best and liked the best and enjoyed it the most? You know, Sohani, uh, so food, of course, comes uh, first and everything to do with food has uh, yeah. been a personal passion and I've like followed that very closely. But, um, yeah, I think all of us are very multidimensional and we have many aspects to our personalities, to our, our characters. So right. I think all of them, all of the many things that I do kind of tap into some aspect or some character of mine. I mean, for instance, the... Literary festival happened because um, as a journalist, I read a lot, you know, mm -hmm. and you're coming with, uh, across authors, across long form articles, you know, uh, you have a, a certain perspective on things. Um, mm -hmm. Radio, because, well, uh, you, you had, I had domain knowledge and perhaps yeah. I just have a taste for radio. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> close to you and your heart, right, uh, Antoine, and, and, and everything well, relates. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, every aspect of food, really, from the, the preparation right. to uh, yeah. understanding the, the history of food, understanding ingredients, right. doing research about them, you know, talking to chefs, going to uh, restaurants. So for me, it's not, food is not just about uh, consuming it. Food is really my way of understanding the world, you know. So when I understand right. food, because Food is so closely tied to who we are and how we right. understand ourselves. And right. you know, food is really a cultural artifact. So yeah. what we eat, how we eat, is really right. a reflection of how we see ourselves and how we see ourselves in the society that we live in. Absolutely. Absolutely right. Bang on, Antoine. Absolutely well said. But you are quite, <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to be rude, but you are 
very very difficult to please <laughs> and you are quite a stickler <laughs> i know that for a fact okay yes, so uh, i mean I, I, being a food writer and a restaurant critic you know it, i mean it's very difficult to please anton lewis because i've seen it myself <laughs> i don't mean it in the negative sense but but tell me and and, and, and the best part about you is you have the knowledge of multi cuisines it's not only one particular cuisine that you have knowledge of you know so so yeah. how do you manage of that if you could you know throw some more light on it okay so so anil let me just break up that question into two parts so first is okay. yeah, the part about being a stickler and yes yeah. i am there are restaurants that restauranters and chefs who don't like me at all <laughs> the restaurants that don't want to invite me when they play some and they know that i am always going to be truthful i am always going to be honest i'm not yeah. someone that, uh, can be handled or you know can be managed uh, so to speak and uh, i think that comes from the fact that you know i still think of myself as an old school journalist and okay. um, so for me the reader more than the restaurant is very mm-hmm. important and mm-hmm. uh, when i write or when i talk on radio for me it's who's listening to me and what how truthful an experience i'm giving to them and how right. truthful is the experience when they go out to a, to a restaurant because right. i think you know, all of us are spending our hard earned money at mm-hmm. these places you know uh, we yeah. don't want to feel cheated we don't want to feel let down by uh, the experience when we go right. to a place we want to know what we're in for whether whether it's right. a bad place or a good place and we're knowingly going to a bad place for instance of course bad is very subjective in in many ways but right. uh, my job really is to give you as honest an assessment of that right. place as possible right. it's up to you to do uh, whatever you want uh, with it you know when right. it comes to knowledge and and learning about it so mm. you know all of us start out with a with a low base uh, i right. was lucky in that sense that i was from the industry you know mm-hmm. i studied hotel management so you know i had all the theory and everything in place and mm-hmm. in my early years when i started writing i would do a lot of research before going out to a festival before going out to uh, a, a new restaurant um, yeah. you know i try and understand the menu try and understand what was going on i educated myself a lot about each place that i went to and you know okay. i remember actually going to one of the italian fe- festivals i think it was um at the lila huh. and it was uh, one of the regional cuisines and i mm-hmm. had learned so much i had studied so much about the the cuisine that when i was asking the chef about certain things he was a bit baffled because <laughs> he hadn't heard about certain aspects of the, the cuisine uh, himself <laughs> you know? so yeah so i mean you 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 keep learning and and that's the really mm-hmm. interesting thing that's the important thing uh when right. you're in communications when you're you know being a critic True. uh there's a certain responsibility that you have so right. you know both chefs both readers they want to know on what basis are you making these judgments on what basis right. are you saying the things that you do so right. it's really important for you to know as much as you can right obviously i will never know as much as a chef who specialize in that region who spend time you know going to the region learning it. but right. i have to come as close as possible to be mm-hmm. fair and to give that chef a chance to and to understand what he is doing and how right. he has done what he or he yeah. she has done what they have right. right wow i think um, your research that you completely deep dive into is something which is uh, really really uh, takes you a long way because i guess that's how you know you get to learn so much and the, the knowledge that you build up so i think that that's fantastic uh, uh, antoine so uh, tell me you know we were just talking about uh, rishike and uh, the, the the radio show that you Uh, have uh, on radio one that the show that you have with him good morning mumbai so how did it all happen and uh, what has been the response you know so actually uh, rishi and i were in college together we did a course on um, on film and television so i okay. mean of the, the, the many hats that i wear i mean film and television is another hat being a restaurant is another hat <laughs> working with ngos is like another hat so there have been very various more hats that 
Rishi really liked uh, what I was bringing to the show. I liked working with them, right. and uh, so I mean, it was completely serendipitous. It was completely yeah. <laughs> I have many things in my life. I mean, everything right. that I have done, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm almost like I had an accidental career in in everything. <laughs> I didn't plan to be a journalist. I just ended up yeah. being a journalist. So, <laughs> uh, oh, that- yeah. That, that that's great uh, adwan uh, it, it it's brilliant how it's happened to you and it's, it's i'm so glad you shared it with us but uh, you know donning so many hats and uh, uh, doing so much i mean you must be really like uh, time management must be a big thing with you you must be like there at it because it's crazy like you know how can you do so much at one time i mean uh, the fact that at one point in time you were editor of a uh, savvy cookbook editor of kadeej times and you've done the biggest festival the, uh, of uh, the mumbai literary festival you know uh, i mean doing a festival is like mad and you were the director of it you know That's and it was not that, uh, sorry you're one of the directors yeah. yeah but that also a director is an important position to be in you know of a festival like that of uh, of that so i mean it's crazy how do you manage your time antoine you must be like really really writing everything down and being particular or keeping a lot of uh, everything uh, you know in your phone ready for you that you okay, you know this is what i have to do at this time this is what i have to do at this time or, or, or how is it that you manage your time You know, so I think one of the things that I've been really lucky with is that yeah. I've managed to do everything that I'm really passionate about. Yeah, and things that I, I really love. So I think when yeah. you enjoy what you're doing, and I think you you know this as much as as me that when yeah. you do the things that you love, it becomes so yeah. much easier. You know, easier. Uh, you yeah. don't feel as stressed out. Of course, there is some tension. You know, when things, but you don't really feel as stressed out. Your mind works uh, naturally with uh, yeah. a lot of things. I am actually an incredibly lazy person. Uh and I have realized that lazy people are time minded, you know? So what we try to do is to get the the task done with the least amount of work. You know? So we become like efficiency experts, you know? How do I go from point A to point B with the least amount of distraction with the least amount of trouble? You figure that out and that's how you do it. So <laughs> you know, when I was coming to Nitai, I was not supposed to be a director. I was just supposed to be a, a, an assistant or a helper, a, a volunteer, yeah. really. I was just a volunteer, right. and I just right. proved to be so incredibly efficient that from one year volunteer, the next year I was director, and I, and I had a whole batch of uh, responsibilities. And and that's the thing with all the other things that I'm doing. You know, I'm consulting right. on video. Right. I'm doing my Insta lives. You know, I'm kind of doing all these things. uh it's just that once you kind of figure out things and once you've done things yeah you yeah. experience kind of helps you do to get things yeah. done quicker do it yeah. you know getting the things much faster yeah. than than <laughs> you do. the more you do it the better you get with it yeah, and yeah. the more challenges you're willing to accept <laughs> and to take on like anything yeah. yeah so i think you have an experience of over two decades of it so now you are a master Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm really good at kind of. Yes, I'm fine. Okay, we have got Saloni Mirchand Nani Malkani here, and she says, "Good to see you both." Hello, Saloni. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> yeah, we've got a whole lot of people joining us. Andre, this is something which I really wanted to ask you. You know, you uh, being so much in the culinary and the food business, okay, uh, 
today people have become suddenly so health conscious you know everything they eat you know they are so particular about you know should i eat this uh, is that good for me is that not good for me and every day there are new theories in the you open a newspaper you open something there are new theories and all but i really want to know the food that we consume you know on a regular basis is it really healthy and i must i have to tell you this uh, this is meant for everybody but me <laughs> because i eat anything and everything and i am a big time sweetaholic you know that antwan okay. <laughs> please continue <laughs> yeah uh, so, you know one of the things uh, so is i don't write about nutrition i don't write about health because exactly yeah. the information changes so much and there's yeah. so many perspectives and uh, a lot of it also is actually very politicized and corporatized so when mm-hmm. you're looking at uh, researchers and i don't look at me- media reports i always go to the original report uh, when i i look at stuff i never look at uh, you know what comes mm-hmm. out into print journalism i look at what the doctors have actually said and uh it's difficult reading but what what happens with all this you need to know what is the source that of mm-hmm. the people who has actually mm-hmm. funded that research and it's only then can oh. you understand you know mm-hmm. what is the legitimacy of that report but as you pointed out things keep changing so i don't write yeah. about it mm-hmm. you know when it comes to uh, eating healthy and eating properly people think oh we'll we'll move to these vegetables or we'll have this kind of a balance or we'll do this and the thing is that if you are going out and buying from any market or any regular market or you know whether it's a um modern retail whether it's like you know one of the modern mm. grocery stores or you're going to a wet market you're going to the local bazaar the problem right. is that uh, you're paying too little for food today you know right. so and this is an idea which is contrary to what people think people think oh food is costing more and more it's actually mm. incredibly cheap and it is cheap because the whole process of right. agriculture has been industrialized you know so what you are yeah. eating is in a sense a factory made product it's right. kind of everything is grown because of fertilizers because of pesticides mm-hmm. so when you start off in, and you, you look at a lot of agricultural experts you also look at you know when you mm-hmm. get tribal communities you look across in, in many spectrum where eating far fewer fruits far fewer vegetables far fewer a far smaller variety right. so you know if there, are, if there are today there are say maybe 20 or 30 or 50 uh mm. variety of wheat that are cultivated there were mm. actually maybe 10000 you wow. know which is now mm. being produced because mm. uh it is easier to cultivate because it's more responsive to fertilizers mm-hmm. because it has a stronger a longer shelf life you know mm-hmm. so all these things are working together to mm-hmm. make access to vegetables fruits for our products easier mm. but in the process we are mm-hmm. actually eating foods that are very unhealthy and mm-hmm. you don't see it because you know the first 20 years or 30 years of of your life you don't really notice these things the effects right. have not actually built up but as you grow older you know and all mm-hmm. of these toxins are continuing in your body they continue to stay on in, in your body and right as you grow older as you grow weaker you start mm-hmm. seeing the effect effects of all these Uh, poor, poorer vegetables, all these vegetables, and it's across. It's not simply vegetables. It's it's your milk. It's your uh, it's your eggs. It's your meat. You know, uh, mm-hmm. we're talking about antibiotic resistance today. You know, mm-hmm. all of these things are because mm-hmm. all of these products are mm-hmm. so filled with chemicals. Right. So yeah, you know, actually eating healthier than people ate maybe fifty or a hundred years ago. We have far right. more diversity. Right. on our table the mm. farm ingredients that we have to play with yeah. but yeah. not necessarily a better quality right uh um uh, what what you say is uh, is is, is uh, absolutely i mean uh, uh you've really like the, the what sharing you have done right now is is, is awesome uh, antoine it's like uh, an eye opener for so many but uh, i have to really uh, ask you this you know the packaged food has come up in a such a big way in the last decade or maybe two decades you know it's it's like a crazy thing everybody wants to um, you know have it easy 
you know, uh, so there are a lot of people who are literally living on packaged food. And I think th I always thought that that's extremely bad for health and that's not at all good for health. But today you are even saying what we are actually eating, what is grown is also not uh, really extremely good for health. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. What, so, so would you would you would you suggest uh, uh, organic food better than the rest? Would you feel that that okay that would be a, the right choice for people to make uh, to be healthy? Uh, I I think that is definitely one direction to go. Of course, there are lots of yeah. problems with organic in, in India because there is no proper uh, certification mm. uh, process. So, mm. simply mm. something in India says that is organic is not necessarily true. So you know. Um, there's, there's a great idea that is now kind of gaining, gaining currency, and it says that uh, all of us have family doctors, uh, right. you know, and we have right. someone, someone whom we trust when we fall in. Mm. We need to cultivate the idea of a family farmer, someone mm. who we know, whose produce we know, whose produce we trust. You know, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. have a group of them, you know, for different kind of things. Right. Start, develop relationships with farmers directly, you know, facilitate it works. It's a it's a two way relationship because right. we know Absolutely. the prices that are happening in agriculture right now. We right. know how poorly farmers are being paid, and once right. we go out there, once you're willing to pay more for better right. produce, right. and you kind of get it directly from them, it works for both people. They're getting a better yeah. income. You're getting a healthier product. So win-win situation for everyone. So yes, that is a much better way. So I am just going to quickly tell you, you know, during the lockdown, uh, we had a contact with Sayadri Farms and uh, we were actually getting everything from the farmers, you know, uh, the vegetables, the fruits and everything and absolutely great quality, the best quality. You could actually make out the difference, you know. Uh, when you had that. So uh, that's, that's absolutely uh, uh, right uh, when you say that. Uh, Antoine, tell me something, you know, uh, something about you, you know, when, when of course I read about it also and, uh, you know, we've discussed about is, is it's really intriguing is that, uh, you know, you had written uh, essays on the, the history of food, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which 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 is uh, which is amazing. I mean, you had given a TEDx talk on it, you know, and also on the myth of uh, authenticity. And you'd conducted a, a series of lectures on uh, the history of restaurants, you know, in Mumbai. So, you know, whilst you were uh, doing research and uh, you know, any any memorable experience, you know, which you felt that you know, okay, this is really my God, this is amazing, really, or is this really? this really had happened and uh, what was the most interesting thing that you had come across so sorry i'm going to answer the second part of your question about the history of uh, bombay restaurants and uh, you know that there are so uh, many uh, uh, nuggets of information that you come across and you throw yeah. away in your head and, uh, yeah. that are really fascinating and you see that the restaurants of today and they're so disconnected from their origins and so uh, let me start off with um, Shere punjab You've heard of Sherry yeah. Punjab, right? Yeah. right? At, of course, um, of course. Just, just outside VT. Now, Sherry yeah. Punjab is actually, uh, I think, must be about 150 years old. It came mm. up a little after VT developed. And uh, today it's a Punjabi restaurant. But can you, could you guess and tell me what kind of food he served when he first opened? I, I'm sorry, I really don't know at all. <laughs> so the owner, of Sherry Panda, when he started out, he started out selling missile power on the streets of Bombay, you know, opposite oh. the VT oh, Can you imagine? Really that? Like humble beginnings. Wow, that's like uh, very, very inspiring. <laughs> and, um, Pancham Puri Wala, you know, Pancham Puri Wala started as a mm. guy sitting on the road, on, on the uh -huh. pavement. And this is, you know, at the time when Bombay Fort was actually existed, you know, that. So you had yeah. the fort walls and all of that, and yeah. everything outside yeah. me was not yeah. Bombay, so to speak. And he started out from like a dabba, sitting over there selling puris and aloo to people <laughs> who would come to watch the hangings. Just you know, look at that, yeah. at that time, two hundred years ago, was was the only form of entertainment, and that's okay. where he started off. You look at wow. Iranis today, and we're talking about the death of yeah. Iranis, but. Iranis actually started out as tapris. They started no, out as three stalls on, on the road. And they were yeah. places where, you know, uh, all the Iranis, the new migrants came right. and they hung around and they, they congregated. 
and from there they went into uh, into the restaurant space now also one other thing about um, the irani restaurants and uh, mm -hmm. irani restaurants are actually very interesting because they first were the first place where a sort of a liberal ethos of everyone eating and drinking together because mm -hmm. uh, iranis were outside of the caste system hindus right. muslims catholics britishers everyone uh, mm -hmm. ate together at the restaurant they all drank mm -hmm. it, but they all were served in different cups oh okay, okay. So, um, and it it was a very interesting challenge because when they had to be served you had to right. figure out which community or which religion that person was from and serve them in the right cup so muslims oh had God. a green cup um okay the hindus had a white cup and i think all the outsiders had a pink cup. all the, the rest had a pink cup and it was okay. quite so a it was all color coded okay okay yeah, yeah. two yeah. the wrong person the cup uh, the right person in the wrong cup so i, I mean oh these are like fascinating stories and how <laughs> things change and i think gandhi yeah. asked to the iranis like listen this has to stop yeah. and everyone has to be served in the same cup and that's when you had the when it, oh okay okay look at that yeah look at that my god what interesting stories you're telling us and sharing with us lovely aunt one i mean it this yeah. is really really exciting <laughs> really really exciting and uh, this is of course about the The, the the history of our hotels in mumbai and uh, that that's great but what about the the, the essays mm -hmm. you know that you wrote about um, yeah. yeah so authenticity is one of the the my let's say uh, uh, it's like one of the windmills i like i'm don quixote kind of you know charging towards it constantly uh, whenever people say something this is authentic or that is authentic because yeah. i actually don't believe in the notion of the authentic and uh, yeah. you know this movie this fabulous movie big night Uh, which I really love, really and uh, it has these two Italian brothers who set up this restaurant. I think in New York, and it's probably the fifties or the early sixties, mm -hmm. and um, they're doing pure Italian food. And you know, the brother is a chef; he's very passionate about it. He's doing right. everything the, the, the right way, but there are no customers. You know, oh. and just down the road, there's another Italian, right. and. Um, He's doing completely Americanized Italian, and he's full. Mm -hmm. And there, there are people always say, and you know, for me, that story is really emblematic about the issue of authenticity. People yeah. don't go to a restaurant to necessarily have an authentic ex experience. They go to enjoy yeah. food. You know, they right. go to eat food that they like. And people mm -hmm. have different levels of knowledge of of a cuisine. So. Some people have never tried anything, so they want to go back and go and have something familiar, and that is. A place that gives people what they want will give them what they're comfortable with. You know, mm. you know uh, many years ago, uh, before I was a food writer, and another hat that I wore was that of a restauranter, <laughs> and I, I, I ran an Indian uh, Chinese place. And you yeah. know, I, I remember I used to have a, a customer who every two or three days, regularly, uh -huh. would order say um, a chicken Sichuan and a chicken chili or chicken mushroom and kind of what. And yeah. um, one day I decided, you know, okay, let me like try upselling. You know, I mean, I need to be a businessman. <laughs> so I said, like, you know, would you like uh, some uh, rice or noodles or something with that? Is that too great? They said, no, 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 no. We have roti. And I said, flabbergasted. You know, we're so used to. It. I just said, oh, you're having a Chinese meal. Like, everything has to be Chinese. Right. But people don't necessarily eat that way. They eat the way that they want to eat. They want, to, yeah. And when it comes to what I mean, there is no single, there is no one way to make a dish. You know, every family has a different palate. Every region has like different things going yes. for them. You adapt to, okay. you know, especially with mothers and children. You know, okay. if your child likes certain elements of of a dish, you will adapt it to that. Yeah. They they want something that's less okay. spicy, less salty, whatever. Okay. You will make it to please them, okay. and that's the way things change. So. Right. I think there is a broad <laughs> spectrum, a broad palette of flavors. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. You know, whether it's with Sindhi food or Catholic yeah. food or Chinese yeah. food, yeah. but there is no one way to do yeah. any particular dish. Yeah. I think it's to each his own, you know. There are so many people who are used to having roti in their meals, or they're used to having rice in their meals, you know. And if they don't have that, they don't feel that their meal is complete. 
so <laughs> they have a manchurian or a shezwan chicken with a roti you know but that's the way they want to have it yeah. we can yeah. get to tell them how they should eat it it's up to them yeah. food is about pleasure and yeah. to certain extent about nutrition that's all that really matters Yes, so we've got uh, Hiren Welling with us, who's saying lovely, and he's enjoying our conversation. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, tell me, Antoine, uh, I know you've always loved cooking a lot yourself, uh, for yourself also. So tell me, what's cooking in Antoine's kitchen these days? You know, <laughs> because uh, yeah. with right through the lockdown and the pandemic and everything, and now of course. Uh, things have opened up a little bit but what's cooking in your kitchen so what did you cook today tell us about <laughs> so today and i think i just posted it on uh, instagram uh, yeah. i for breakfast i made a uh, ramen ramen noodle waffles uh, <laughs> with a thai uh, a spicy thai style uh, uh, chicken and uh, a basil and wow. with a thai style uh, crispy fried egg on, on top of it so <laughs> uh it's quite see, something quite <laughs> different yeah like totally different <laughs> wow wow that's interesting that's interesting but yeah. actually you know this, this, this is amazing so when you when you cook in your kitchen you know for yourself uh, anjuan you know uh, i know you you love cooking i know you're passionate about cooking and all so you must be going like all out and you must be going crazy about it and you must be very particular with the ingredients that what you're putting and uh, you know uh, whether the taste that matters or what's that what what's it tell us about it <laughs> and where you shop you know for your ingredients also as that matters also <laughs> again twani this all goes back to my laziness so yeah. again when when I, when I when i'm thinking about cooking it's about how do i make it the quickest the least amount of step but with the most amount of punch and flavor oh, so okay. then, uh, so i always think like you know uh, what what can i do that can uh, get done quickly yeah. but you know really taste good and one yeah. of the things that i think about a lot and which i think people don't think enough is texture yeah. so i think about how is it going to feel you know not simply how is it going to taste what are the yeah. different kind of textures that i'm going to have uh yeah. in in the in the in the dish you know? right, uh, right. and then based on that i kind of come up with uh, different kinds of ideas yeah. so that it really balances out i have different kind of taste different flavors <laughs> different presentation uh, i yeah. buy from everywhere really uh, okay. it's just that i choose a little more carefully about okay. what the the condition of the the vegetable is and how what it looks like and and how it is i don't go just go blindly and pick up so whenever mm-hmm. i'm going i mean i do the purchasing myself when i'm mm-hmm. um yeah. i don't just go to so i go i test i check and feel i'll never be able to order groceries online you know not at least fresh produce <laughs> that is <laughs> I can understand. As I said, you're quite a stickler. <laughs> Antoine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Antoine, what do you think about food trails? You know, do you yourself go on food trails uh, or travel? You know, uh, where food on food trails? You know, do you do that? Yeah. 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 So I used to do, uh, but twenty years ago, uh, when it wasn't a big thing. I mean, I used to take people. I used to do the mm. whole uh, Ramzan trail uh, with uh, people. Ah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. To yeah. To a lot of places to uh, Mamalad, Mamad Ali Road. Uh, road today yeah. I will not mm. go to Mamad Ali Road because now there are only tourists. There are only people yeah. outside of Mamad Ali. There are hardly any uh, new people there. But whenever right. I do go to a new city, uh, I do try and figure out. You know, when I travel, mm. that's the only mm. time that I'm organized because mm. that's the only time I put up an Excel sheet with. all the places i am going to lunch and dinner wow you know, so i kind of mark out <laughs> this day like lunch here breakfast here dinner here you know and for whatever number of days i have my itinerary planned out so that's the only thing that i i like the way you plan out your itinerary you only to eat food <laughs> that's brilliant yeah. but aren't you are eating so much of outside food uh, i mean uh, what about your health how do you maintain yourself and you've lost oodles of weight so how do you how do you balance that um, i've never had a problem with eating from out uh, i have never fallen ill in the last 
20 years not i mean right. apart from right. one just one case where it was that's like a bad right. uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah but um, i've managed and you know actually uh, in the last two or three years i've really taken care of my uh, my weight because i mm. had actually uh, bloated and really kind of you know right i was, I was right. like definitely overweight so i consciously right. um mm. took up the the challenge of losing weight and i think in the last two or three years i've lost about 20 kilos yeah yeah absolutely we can see that uh, so it's, it's amazing how you've uh, really and the the kind of food that you make it sounds so interesting <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's superb. So we have Irene Welling who says that when it comes to Indian traditional recipes, cooking, unlike restaurants which cook these items on high flame, don't you think that they should be cooked on low flame? This is a question for you, Antoine. Well, I think it it depends on uh, on different uh, dishes. Uh, not all dishes need to be cooked on right. uh, slow flame. For instance, I think vegetables, right. uh, particularly Indian vegetables, all that need to be cooked quickly so that and they they have a bit mm -hmm. of a, a crunch but mm -hmm. there are a number of dishes that actually benefit from slow cooking from overnight uh, cooking and for instance i did something with uh, uh, goa sausages uh, some time ago you know i did a um, one of the traditional uh, goan dishes is something called fejao okay. and it was done pretty quickly it's rajma cooked with uh, goa sausage so again you you may you pressure cook the rajma and that thing but i Far cooked the the rajma and then I left okay. it to slow cook in a slow cooker with the goa sausage for about fourteen hours. So, oh, you know, uh, so it really absorbed. That's all, that's all. like that many hours. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah. So okay. yeah, certain dishes uh, definitely benefit uh, from slow cooking. Um, right. And uh, you know, I've had dishes, certain meats also. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're cooking, like say something like a kadakna. Which is mm -hmm. a really tough meat. You can't cook right. it like the same way as a chicken. You have to slow cook it. You have to close it and like you know on a slow flame, and mm -hmm. leave it uh, for a long time. So it it depends on uh, dish to dish. Wow, what what level of patience you have, Antoine? Wow, super. <laughs> that's that's great. Uh, fantastic. This has been a such an amazing session uh, with you. What a brilliant episode! What a, a awesome knowledge sharing you have done today, and especially people who are watching you. Uh, you know, you've told us so much about the kind of food that is that that we are eating and the the details that you have told us. It's it's really great. One last question I'd like to ask you. Uh, I know, Anjuan, you're a great animal lover. You love animals. Uh, you you've got dogs in your own house. So uh, tell me, uh, one thing I need to ask you is. Uh, uh have you ever thought of doing anything about dog food where dog food is concerned you know uh anything for them uh you know in in that matter or in because you you you're so much into food and uh you love animals so uh anything uh specific you know, out there uh you know once uh i did make uh liver biscuits and uh uh for them <laughs> and uh uh, and also, I, I had no clue what I was doing, so I completely mucked up the the recipe. But uh, so something that should have taken me like half an hour to do, ended up being a slow cooked recipe because I got everything wrong. Uh, oh my! But, um, no, but you know one of the things I realized when when I'm cooking for the dogs, uh, sometimes when the maid is not well or you know whatever, uh, the techniques that I use for cutting vegetables and and everything. I use the same techniques when cooking, cutting for them, you know. So all the vegetables are cut in the same size, you know. Not that they care, but they, I would still cut everything the same way. I would cut, I would, you know, it's all uniform. It's just, you know, it's uh, all of them. I'm, I'm as particular. It doesn't matter to me who I'm cooking for in that sense. Yeah. That's my yeah. dogs or people. I am so um, trained yeah. in in cooking in a certain way that I just yeah. cook like that. Yeah. <laughs> So that's great. Well, uh, 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 but actually, when you say that you know you uh, even the vegetables, the way you cut when you're cooking for your dogs, you're so particular about it. But that's you. That, that that's that's the Antoine touch. <laughs> well, Antoine, we've got one more question from Hiren Welling. He says that I'm in the food business and I'd like to offer you some good food, 
scared to say authentic food <laughs> in Maharashtrian cuisine and Goan cuisines. Where can I deliver it? <laughs> well, it ain't for that. It ain't for that. You have to call me. <laughs> right? I don't want. <laughs> Actually, Actually, I thought only the desserts we have to call you. <laughs> <laughs> right, only the desserts. Correct, correct. <laughs> Antoine is available on all social media. Hiran Welling. He is available on Instagram. He is uh, available on uh, Facebook by his name, Antoine Lewis, and that is A N T O I N E L E W I S. But Hiran, you know, we know each other very well. We, I know Hiran very well because he's been in the food business. Hiran is also known as Amol Welling, and he stays in Dadar. So Hiran, please do message me. I will definitely uh, send you Antoine's um, uh, sure. connect, and then you all can connect with each other. That will be great. Uh, we've got. Uh, Suyash Soyu, who's saying hello, my dear Dr. Suhani Ji. Very good evening. Good evening, Suyash. It's so nice to see you out here. Thank you for joining our show. So this is what uh, uh, we've got a whole lot of people uh, out here. Uh, they're really, really enjoying our talk, uh, Antoine. And with all the yummy food that you have talked of, my mouth is watering. That's why I took a picture for like you know a few seconds off and i said i better not make a fool of yeah, myself so for, for my uh, radio show that that is one of the biggest complaints i, I get yeah. it's like yeah. you know everyone's like just gotten out of the, out of bed they get it driving to work around and they say you know you're talking about this food early in the morning <laughs> and you're driving us nuts because it's making us so hungry so yeah i mean yeah. Right. the one you said about those ramen waffles it's driving me mad <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to bully you into making some for us also. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We had a great meal at your place once. We should kind of do that again. <laughs> yes. yes, in fact, I need to tell all the viewers that Antoine had cooked some amazing food for us when he had come over once and we'd had the most amazing meal. So that's Antoine Luce for your people. He's uh, an amazing chef by himself because he cooks brilliantly because he cooks from the heart. That's why I, I really feel it. It all comes from here. And you can actually taste in his food that he's, he's so amazing. Thank you once again, Antoine. It was brilliant having you on my show. Uh, what amazing things that you shared with us uh, right from uh, the ingredients that we use in our day-to-day -day lives to uh, the history of uh, the, the, the restaurants in Mumbai uh, to a whole lot of things. Thank you so much for sharing. It's been great, great uh, listening to you. We've uh, had a great uh, uh, time. I hope you had a great time too, Antoine. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank you to everyone who kind of joined and, and listened in. It's yes. a pleasure to be here and great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. So before we go, I'd like to thank all the viewers once again for joining us. We've had a, a fantastic show here. We've had uh, Antoine Luz here with us. It was great having him here. And uh, before I go, I, as I always say, stay safe and be positive and one more thing i always uh, talk about is in case if anything is bothering you please don't keep it bottled up within yourself either speak to somebody who you trust speak to your inner circle your good friend or a family member somebody who you trust because you never know the problem that is bothering you could be bothering someone else also it could help that person also but just keeping within within you is not going to help you at all so please do that and with on that note we shall say bye bye to everyone and god bless and thank you once again antoine lewis it was great having thank you. you thank you so much bye bye and god bless <laughs>